Good morning, everyone. Here we are on uh, July the 3rd. And uh, it's a morning like this that makes me long to go camping. It's just beautiful. Look at the sun just behind me. The sun is gorgeous. That <laughs> block it. Um, so reading through the... the the reading this morning, we're, we're looking at a lot of a, a Elisha, what Elisha was up to. And we have three examples of, of um, how the realm that we've been called into operates uh, at a, a different place than, than what most people are willing to accept. You know, we're, we're quite content to have our churches where we worship God authentically. We, we come in with much love and appreciation and, and thanksgiving for all that he's done, all that he continues to do for the cross. I mean, we will be spending all eternity thanking him for the cross. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, and yet, he's he's invited us to to operate in, in the kingdom realm. Um, I, I can't go into everything now, but uh, those of you from the church, you, you know everything that we've been studying and looking at. So here we have, there's really three examples that, that I want to point out uh, this morning. Um, the first is, is when uh, the army came to, to arrest Elisha. And uh, his servant went up on, on the roof and, and he saw this army around. And uh, he was all panicky. But Elisha was as calm as anything because he, he knew the reality of God. He, he, knew, he knew the realm in which he operated. And, and he asked the Lord to open his servant's eyes so that, that he could see. And uh, the servant suddenly saw the, the, the forces of, of heaven, the forces of the kingdom, um, guarding Elisha. That nothing was going to happen to Elisha. That's, that's the reality in, in which we live. Uh, that's a promise that has been given to us again and again. And yet we continue to fail to understand it and live it. We've been given a, a boldness, a, a confidence, not, not from nothing. But because God is with us. Because God is with us. And uh, we're supposed to have that same boldness that, that Elisha had. Uh, that the prophets had. Uh, that we, we operate in that. Uh, another example was with Naaman. Here comes a truck. It's great living on a place like this. There's not supposed to be trucks coming up and down our streets. It was actually supposed to be like a country street, but because of the construction in town, uh, everybody comes through here right now. So anyway, um, with Naaman, um, he came before the, the prophet, and uh, the prophet told him simply, go wash, go wash in the Jordan seven times. And Naaman had an expectation. He was he expected a, a showmanship type of thing. He expected this uh, flaunting, you know, where he'd come out and wave his arms and uh, call down the, uh, uh, the miracle from, from heaven on them and, and all this sort of stuff. And that's, that's part of the problem of why we, we find it hard to, to um, operate in this, in this realm of the nothing is impossible. Uh, because we, we expect it to be something spectacular, but it's actually everyday life. It's everyday life. God using everything of everyday life to impact the people around us. It's the simple things. It, it's not showmanship. They, they they don't have to come. They don't have to come to um, uh, these big events and, and stuff to have prophets speaking over them. Uh, it's given to each of us. Uh, we speak into people's lives. We let them know what's going on. And we're we're given that insight. We're we're given the uh, the prophetic words to speak. It's it's just everyday stuff. And the. Uh, the third one was was uh, when Samaria was was being surrounded by the enemy, and they had this huge famine that was going on, and uh, people were dying, and uh, the king had it. He 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 blamed Elisha. He wanted to, to kill Elisha, and when he came to speak to Elisha, he he said it will be all done uh, tomorrow. Uh, this is what uh, things will be sold for, and the. Uh, the servant who was with the king doubted. He spoke doubt. And unless you said, you're, you're going to see it, but you're not going to get to partake in it. And uh, sure enough, uh, God had caused fear in the enemy. Uh, the siege was, was lifted up. 
and they left this huge amount of, of stuff behind and uh, so everything became, became cheap and, and uh, the servant ended up dying. He, he, he was trampled, he was, uh, he, he, he was uh, placed on, on gate duty and uh, so he ended up dying and it was, uh, that's sad, <laughs> it's really sad but it, he saw that the siege had been broken and, and people have food again. Uh, the problem with the servant is that he couldn't see beyond what was in existence. He, he, he couldn't see beyond what was at hand. And, and I would love to say that that's just uh, people without Christ. But it's not. It's, it's the Christians. In fact, it's, it's sadder because it's Christians. Uh, the world doesn't know any better. But we know. We, we have the word. We have examples. We have testimonies. We have the, even our own experience. And yet we fail. Even though God provided last last disaster and he's he's provided for the last 100 disasters in our life um we have problems with believing for today it's, it's crazy it's crazy uh, and we expect to be able to operate in, in the in the realm of the nothing is impossible without actually believing it you know we're, we're going to explore this we're going to look at this further because I, I i think it's really important and uh just, but in this day, but just get into that place with the Lord. Nothing is impossible. Just keep saying it all day. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. And when you are presented with things, impossibilities in people's lives, declare that nothing is impossible. Realm. Bring that realm into that, that place and, and see what God's going to do with that. So you'll be blessed, be encouraged, and uh, we'll talk to you later.